This LOS is Describe Exchange Rate Regimes. Exchange Rate Regimes. An exchange rate regime is the policy framework for foreign exchange. The ideal currency regime, which does not exist, would consist of the following circumstances. One, the exchange rate is credible and fixed. Two, all currencies are fully convertible. And three, all countries undertake independent monetary policy for domestic objectives. In reality, there's a range of regimes, starting here on the left-hand side, a fixed exchange rate regime. In the middle, we have a peg system. And on the right-hand side, we have independently floating rate regime. Okay, so we're gonna look at some different types of regimes here. And on this uh, first slide, you can see that in this case, we're looking at all fixed regimes, okay? And then there's a description here. And there's some key terms, for example, if we look at the first one, this dollarization, that's a very key term that you could be tested on. So let's uh, look here first. There's no separate legal tender. That's a fixed type of uh, exchange rate regime. And that's called dollarization. What does that mean? No separate legal tender. You don't have your own currency. So you're using another nation's currency as the medium of exchange. In most cases, it's the US dollar. So we call that dollarization. I think that's an easy concept to understand. In terms of a shared currency, again, the type is fixed. It's a monetary union. The use of a currency of a group of countries as the medium of exchange, shared currency. Currency board system, that's using another currency in reserve as the monetary base, maintaining a fixed parity. If we look at a fixed parity or fixed rate system, we're using another currency or baskets of currencies in reserve, but with some discretion. So very similar to the currency board system, because here you can see that they're using a fixed parity in the currency board system, but this says fixed parity or fixed rate system. Uh, so there is some discretion within the bands, okay? So that's a distinction between the two. And finally, the target zone is a fixed parity. It's a peg with a fixed horizontal intervention bands. This slide now we're looking at uh, um, some peg type and floating type exchange rate regimes. So the first one, active and passive crawling pegs, the description, adjust the exchange rate against a single currency with adjustments for inflation passive or announce in advance active, okay? Uh, the next uh, exchange rate regime to look at, fixed parity with crawling bands, which is a peg type, and it's similar to the target zone, but bands can be widened. Now we're getting into a floating type exchange rate regime. The first one, managed float, that allows the exchange rate to float, but you intervene to manage it towards the targets. And then finally, at the end of the spectrum, the independent floating rates, which is a floating rate exchange, and the exchange rate is market determined solely by uh, supply and demand. So we'll just do a practice question to check our understanding. Which of the following is not a condition of an ideal currency regime? A, fully convertible currencies. B, fully independent monetary policy. Or C, independently floating exchange rates. Okay, I just copied from the uh, first slide, actually, the ideal currency regime. So this is looking for not a condition of the ideal currency regime. So just a quick review. Uh, the following circumstances, exchange rate is credible and fixed. All currencies are fully convertible and countries should undertake independent monetary authority. So I said an ideal currency regime, fully ind independent monetary authority, true. That's green to green. Fully convertible currencies, that's true. That's uh, blue to blue. But here, independently floating exchange rate, no. Uh, the list is credible and fixed. So C is wrong. That's the false. That's the not. So the correct answer is C. An ideal currency regime would have credibly fixed exchange rates among all currencies. This would eliminate currency-related uncertainty with respect to the prices of goods and services, as well as real and financial assets. Another practice question here. In practice, both a fixed parity regime and a target zone regime allow the exchange rate to float within a band around the parity level. The most likely rationale for the band is that the band allows the monetary authority to A, be less active in the currency market, B, earn a spread on its currency transactions, or C, exercise more discretion in monetary policy. 
The correct answer is C. Fixed exchange rates impose severe limitations on the exercise of independent monetary policy. With a rigidly fixed exchange rate, domestic interest rates, monetary aggregates, for example the money supply, and credit conditions are dictated by the requirement to buy and sell the currency of, at the rigid parity. Even a narrow band around the parity level allows the monetary authority to exercise some discretionary control over these conditions. In general, the wider the band, the more independent control the monetary authority can exercise. And one last practice question to finish this LOS. A fixed exchange rate regime in which the monetary authority is legally required to hold foreign exchange reserves backing 100% of its domestic currency issuance is best described as A, dollarization, B, a currency board, or C, a monetary union. Okay, this question shows the importance of uh, memorizing the exchange rate regimes and the description of. If you've done a good job memorizing, this question's not all that difficult because it asked a fixed, uh, fixed exchange rate regime in which the monetary authority is legally required to hold foreign exchange reserves backing 100% of its domestic currency as best described as A, dollarization, B, currency board, or C, monetary union. Well, we know dollarization, we're using another nation's currency as the medium of exchange. We don't have a domestic currency, so it had to be uh, incorrect. It had to be wrong. And if again, if we look at a monetary union, uh, that's using a currency of a group of countries as the medium of exchange. Again, no domestic currency, so monetary union is wrong. So the correct answer, it had to be B is the correct one. Again, if you've done your memorization, pretty easy. So B is correct. With a currency board, the monetary authority is legally required to exchange domestic currency for a specified foreign currency at a fixed exchange rate. It cannot issue domestic currency without receiving foreign currency in exchange, and it must hold that foreign currency as a 100% reserve against the domestic currency issued. Thus, the country's monetary base, bank reserves, plus notes and coins in circulation is fully backed by foreign exchange reserves. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.